Hello and welcome to work to game This is our parents guide to Fortnite. Now, my name is Brian and over the last year, I've had several parents talk to us about how they got a huge unexpected bill from their kids playing Fortnite and other free to play games. The most I've ever heard of from one individual kid is they spent over $800 on Fortnite and being that Fortnite is bringing in over $2 billion a year, it's not that surprising to learn that this is not an isolated incident. So the goal of this video is to help educate you on the various parental controls at your fingertips and if nothing more, just make you aware of them both in game and on the different platforms. We're not here to tell you how to parent, mind you, we're parents too and <laughs> we know how hard it can be. Okay, before we dive into the actual controls, I feel it's important for me to relay to you while Fortnite is very popular, this could happen in any game. Do note that kids will be kids and we're hearing reports from others that they're actually bullied into spending money on this game just to fit in at school. Kids who don't are actually being labeled a quote unquote default as a way for kids to kind of flex their parents' money for some reason. I don't know, kids are weird, but let's do this thing. So one thing I do want to say is I want to give credit to Epic Games for having a really detailed set of parental instructions on their website. I'll include the link to it in the description of this video below in case you're looking to follow along with me as well. But it's important to note that there are no settings to manage your spending within the game. Spending is managed on a platform level. So if you have a credit card or PayPal hooked up to any of your devices, be sure to lock spending down on the platform level. We'll go over that in more detail here soon, but links will also be available by platform in the description of this video as well. To access your parental controls from within the game, just press your start or menu button and navigate down to parental controls. From here, you're gonna be required to set up a pin. This is very important. Uh, it will help confirm your account. Now for me as a kid, these pins were pretty easy to break because I really knew out of a handful of numbers what my father liked best. So they never really ended up stopping me. I tell you this because I bet your kids know you pretty well too, enough to break your pin if you're not careful. If they get the pin, then they can change their settings and unless you're playing the game with them, which I highly recommend that you do, you might not be any other wiser. But let's go ahead and talk about what settings in-game you have access to, and then we'll dive into the various controls at the platform level. So for Fortnite in-game, you have filter mature language, auto decline friends request, hide your name from your non-squad members, hide non-squad members' names, voice chat, text chat, and weekly playtime reports. If you really wanna know how much time they're spending on it, I recommend turning that on. You can also also manage this overall, your entire experience from the platform as well. Okay, so now let's dive into how this money is spent. Why are kids spending money on these free-to-play games? And then we're gonna go over platform-specific controls. In Fortnite and other quote-unquote free games, they offer player stores to offer different skins and various other ways that you can quote-unquote make yourself stand out in the game world. Fortnite uses a two-tier marketing approach. The Battle Pass system, which essentially gives you for free, but then having the Premier Pass unlocks a lot more content for you. Now, Fortnite's seasonal model, I think is actually very fair. If your kid is actively playing this game, they're going to have a lot of time with it, and the season itself will basically reward you enough credit to purchase the next season if you play it enough. So in theory, you could only buy one season and have enough to keep playing forever and ever as long as they're actively playing the game. This is really fair in my opinion. However, if they do spend the currency which the game doles out, you will have to purchase additional seasons. Seasons offer a variety of rewards. It can be very exciting and very interesting to play. Personally, I, as a parent and as a gamer, I'm actually a real big fan of the system. The other system that it offers is a store in which this is kind of a, the fear of missing out model. They have limited time skins and various different content for you so that you can go in and jump in and have a good time. Where this gets a little tricky is that FOMO, that fear of missing out like I talked about. For adults who play the game, honestly, you know what? It's, you gotta rely on personal responsibility at some point. But for kids, this is a gray area. They might not necessarily understand. They might feel that pressure, uh, especially among school kids to have whatever the latest <laughs> fad is. We've all felt that pressure, we all know it very well. So this is where you wanna set spending limits. This is where you wanna lean into the platform specific options. And you could do so in a variety of ways depending on the platform that you're on. So from Xbox, you can actually do it from the Xbox console and xbox.com. From PlayStation, you need to manage it from the PlayStation 4. And from Nintendo Switch, you actually have to go out and download an app for iOS or Android 
to set and restrict spending limits by account. So let me go and show you. So on Xbox Xbox console, just go over here to settings, hitting the home button and clicking on settings, and you'll see family settings listed right here. Here's where you can manage your family members and go into your kids' content and control everything that is allowed. Access to age appropriate content, access to privacy and online safety, web filtering, pretty much what can they do from the system. But there's more to offer here. And this leads me to xbox.com or essentially account.microsoft.com. From your kid's account, as the adult, you can set activity, you can manage report times, you can set screen time limits, you can set app limits, content restrictions, but really we're gonna focus in on spending right here. Here you can set whether they need approval from a parent to purchase things and also email you when something is purchased in case, I don't know, you're out of town and you're like, what did we just buy? Uh, here you can also add money to their account so that you're basically giving them that virtual wallet. If you know that video games are a currency for them, you're gonna have a, you know, the ability to do so and set limits. You know, that way they can ideally learn to hopefully maybe start budgeting correctly. Yes, they can have that skin today, but what about that skin tomorrow? They don't have enough money. You know, it's gonna be that risk versus reward. <laughs> I don't envy you <laughs> at all. It's never, never fun. It would be great if money was unlimited, but this is the real world for sure. Now, how to do this actually on a PlayStation 4, you need to go into your settings. Then from here, parental controls and family management, and then family management. This is where you're gonna set a spending limit on your different children's accounts. You can actually set a monthly spending limit by, and then just press essentially the X or what we've just learned as the cross button. And finally, on the Nintendo Switch, again, you have to download their parental controls app. And here you'll be able to go in and set whether they can purchase things from the Nintendo Switch eShop. It's important for you to know that if they go ahead and do this, that you are not gonna be restricted on 3DS or Wii U. This is just for Switch going forward. So keep that in mind in case they have a 3DS or a Wii U still lying around the house and y'all haven't fully upgraded to the Nintendo Switch platform. It is weird that this is separate from the console experience, but it seems like everybody seems to handle it differently. But I'll leave it to you there. I'm sorry that I can't capture my phone and my PlayStation died, so I can't show you specifically. But again, I will include links to the descriptions for all of these details in the description of this video. And if you guys have any questions, if you get stuck on anything, just let us know in the comments. We're here to help. Uh, that's the whole goal of this, essentially where from the argument, should these companies be allowed to charge for these games? Yeah, we, we definitely agree that they should, but there's obviously a big difference between a child and an adult, and I wanna hopefully help give the adults in the room here the tools that they need so they can have the best experience possible. Anyway guys, for work to game my name's Brian. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have an amazing day, and I hope to see you in my next video, but until then, take care.